Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Daily Word this morning. It's Monday, the beginning of a new week. So glad you could join me for our continued conversation through our Daily Word and what it means for us, and specifically, of course, how we might apply it to our daily lives. You can see behind me that I have placed flame to my Christ candle. It's a reminder for me and for you. If you have a candle, I invite you to light it. It's a reminder for us of the presence of the Holy Spirit with us. So please take time to light the candle as a reminder of God's presence with all of us. Um, it's a beautiful morning this morning. A little chilly, but a beautiful morning. So glad you could join me. So for our scripture this morning, it's a familiar text. It's it's in the upper room. The scene is in the upper room. And they've made their way there, and there's been a discussion. And it's an interesting discussion. It kind of it kind of applies to us and filters down to us in our culture where we are now. We hear this. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table, but I am among you as one who serves? You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my father conferred on me a kingdom. So you may eat and drink at the table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So it's at the Last Supper. And Jesus has commissioned disciples to go and find this place. And it's in this place, in this moment, at this table where they've gathered, in these final moments of their ministry together, in their final moments of Jesus' life with them, he is he's pouring out his heart and sharing his final instructions with the disciples. Now, his final instructions are what? That, that they love each other and that they love each other so strongly, so um, powerfully that the world will know their disciples because they've loved each other. He gives them this, this mandate. And he's, he's telling them, you know, in this Last Supper um, to remember in the future for me, it's this vital thing here where Jesus says to the disciples that this meal we're sharing, it's going to sustain you. And every time you do it together in the future, remember me. He gives them these vital instructions, but it's probably not a surprise that around the table, um, they're only really half listening to what Jesus has to say. They're distracted by this familiar argument, who among them is going to be considered the greatest? Now, it's an interesting question, right? It's, it's a question that haunts us in our culture. You know, athletes are often called the GOAT, the greatest of all time. And, and we categorize them. And we... We strive for greatness. You know, we, we have this false sense of what greatness really is, I think, and what it means for us. We, we think greatness has to do with exceptionalism and putting something first, whether it be a personality or putting America first, whatever, whatever that looks like. Jesus, however... He doesn't rebuke them, interestingly enough. He doesn't tell them to stop. Um, he doesn't rebuke them for wanting to be great. But he redefines for them and for us the meaning of greatness. Because he asks them, who's greater, 
the one who's at the table or the one who serves? He gives them a moment to ponder the question, but then he points out, I am among you as one who serves. In the eyes of our competitive, consumer-driven world, it seems like the one at the head of the table and the one with the most possessions and the one with the loudest voice um, is regarded as the greatest. But in the economy of heaven, in the economy of Jesus, as he points out to us, it's the one who serves who is the greatest. I think for us in our lives, as we live with each other, as we serve with each other, um, we, we have to, I think, um, kind of kind of call ourselves back, if you will, to, to kind of turn away from the glamour of greatness and making something great, whether it's making America great or making an athlete great or whatever it is. I think we have to, we have to reframe our thinking about this. I think one of the things that we find ourselves most challenged with when it comes to greatness is that and I fall prey to this too. We always want to be first, right? We always want to be first in line. We look for the shortest line at the grocery store. We look for the clearest path from point A to point B. We get frustrated when people get in front of us and cut us off. And we think it's a race sometimes from, you know, from stoplight to stoplight or, or whatever it is. And I think, I think for us, Jesus challenges us really in our lives, you know, to refocus, to retrain ourselves, to, to turn away from the bright lights of the middle and to find ourselves, as Jesus reminds us, as ones who serve, who serve each other. We talked about it yesterday in church, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We talked about the love chapter, of course, and what Paul has to say about us. And it's really not about, about um, this emotional kind of love that we're talking about. It's about, I talked about yesterday, it's the long kind of love that, that we love each other, you know, in the long run kind of way. And we serve each other in the long run kind of way, knowing that sometimes we never get a thank you. Sometimes we never um, find it, our love and our serving reciprocated. Sometimes we just, we just have to well, not sometimes. We just have to keep going. We have to keep serving and knowing that what we're called to do as disciples, as people of faith, as Christians specifically, we're really not called to greatness. We're really not. We, we think we are, but see, this whole idea of greatness in my mind, this whole idea of, of greatness has been just stolen from what Jesus has to say. You know, that if we serve each other, if we love each other, if we realize that love is patient, love is kind, is not, it's not rude, it's not self-seeking, it's not easily angered, it keeps no records of wrong, it rejoices with the truth, it always trusts, it always hopes, it always perseveres, love never fails. If we serve in that kind of way, then greatness just, just finds a way for the red carpet to be unfurled. We've got it wrong, folks, when we talk about greatness the way we've been talking about it, I believe. And Jesus points it out to us. You know, for the disciples, greatness was about who's going to be on the right and who's going to be on the left. Who's going to be looked upon, you know, with the best eyes. There's this reminder from Jesus. The one who serves. The first shall be last. The last shall be first. The one who serves really, really in the economy of heaven in the eyes of Jesus it's then that greatness then exudes itself. So I wish for us in our lives, as we search for greatness, whatever that is, that we would just turn away and, and love each other and serve each other, knowing then that true greatness in the eyes of Jesus will, will find its way. So I hope, that's, I hope that's a good word for us as we serve and live with each other. So... Thanks for joining me this Monday morning. 
Uh, know of God's love that surrounds you. Know of my love for all of you. And I'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Have a great day.